Since 2004, Roger Stein Chiropractic has offered spine and joint manipulation services to residents of Montgomery County and surrounding areas. Conditions treated include lower back pain, migraines, headaches, whiplash, carpal tunnel, neck pain, sciatica, joint pain, sports injuries, herniated discs, and complications from pregnancy. Roger Stein Chiropractic, led by Dr. Stacy Rogers and Dr. Brian McGee, is an integrity verified chiropractic clinic. Call 936 441 9990 for an appointment or visit rogersteinchiropractic.com. That's R O D G E R S S T E I N chiropractic.com. Team Sinisi is a proud sponsor of Conroe Culture News. Vinny Sinisi and his professional team provide comprehensive real estate services throughout the greater Montgomery County area and beyond. Whether looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, Team Sinisi has an impeccable reputation. Contact Team Sinisi for a great experience at teamsinisi.com. That's T-E-A-M-S-I-N-I-S-I.com. Hello, and welcome to Conroe Culture News, FM 104.5, 106.1, and live streaming IRLoneStar.com at Lone Star Community Radio here in downtown Conroe. I am your host, Margie Taylor, and we're going to talk about a lot of fun stuff today. I have guest uh, Dr. Stacy Rogers, who's also our sponsor of Roger Stein Chiropractic. She will be on in the second half, and we will hear from Katie Krauts, the founder of Bears Etc., and her partner board member Phil Anderson he also runs operates the best place to have your office office evolution on FM 1488 by the escape theater and we will hear from them shortly but first again the show is sponsored by Roger Stein chiropractic and team Sinisi real estate Roger Stein Chiropractics have been voted the best chiropractic center in Montgomery County for many years. They are located at 3033 West Davis. And, of course, we're going to hear more about it when she comes on here. But they treat everyone from infants to seniors, weekend athletes to professionals, with a focus on natural, holistic healing, relieving pain, optimal health. And uh, Dr. Stacy Rogers holds certifications in adjusting extremities, clinical nutrition, prenatal, and pediatric care. Team Sinisi Real Estate Group serves the greater Montgomery County and is your best source for buying, selling, or investing. So, you know, the interest rates aren't going to stay low forever, just saying. They've been for quite a while now, seems like well over a year, but they are going to start creeping up. So whether you're buying a home, selling a home, or you have extra money and you want to invest in real estate, it's a good thing. Call Team Sinisi, 281-507-9777, because it's, it's an easy name to remember. <laughs> Team Sinisi. So a few things that are happening around us. October, October. We love October. Fall, scarecrows, pumpkins, all of that. I even heard there's a pumpkin shortage happening. How could that be? I don't know. And a turkey shortage coming up for Thanksgiving and Christmas. But we're not going to worry about that right now. Let's talk about October. So what's coming up is the Conroe Cajun Catfish Festival. That is right around the corner. And it's October 8th through the 10th, all through the streets of downtown Conroe. And if you haven't been, you need to go check it out. Because even during a pandemic, they were able to have a successful event last year. And uh, there's carnival rides, vendors, Mr. and Mrs. Catfish pageant, live music on two stages, festival food. I mean, it's just fun. Just go out there and enjoy. And the really cool thing about the uh, Catfish Festival is they give back to the community through different nonprofits and things like that. So if you want to find out more, you can go to friendsofconroe.com and or you can follow their Facebook page. So also happening, as you can see, the winners of the UST Max Center, they were collaborating with the Conroe Art League, and they will have something October 7th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. with the winners of their Hope-themed art contest. So they have several winners. One is um, a uh, artistic rendering called Unseen Things. Another is Hope in the Garden and Hope Takes Flight. We all need a little hope. Hope moves us forward. So go check that out, downtown Conroe. It's on Main Street across, across from the courthouse. 
And as we're talking about fall, make sure you get your decor. Go to Mimi's on Main, Main Street Merchants, the Assistant League. You may even find something fun to wear. So, I mean, I'm all about it. The orange, the rest, the yellows, all of it. You know, it's short-lived, so enjoy. And you can always have see live music and brunch every Sunday at the Red Brick Tavern in Pacific Yard House. So we are just going to roll into our first guest today, who is Katie with Bears Etc. and Phil Anderson, who is also on the board. And we're going to talk about all things Oktoberfest. Yes. Right, Katie? Yeah. Oktoberfest. October, Yay! accentuating the bear, Oktoberfest. Yes. So, Oktoberfest, this is the third annual Oktoberfest? Yes, it is. So, we're very excited because we have a new venue this year. We'll actually be at Southern Star Brewery. So, okay. So, uh, we are very excited to add craft beer to our Oktoberfest. And it's it'll be a fun time. Yes. So, but besides just being out there, you, you have a lot of things going on at, at the oh festival, right? Yes. So we have vendor area, and those vendor spots are filling up. So if you don't have your vendor spot reserved yet, email me, Facebook us, uh, info at bearsetc.org, and get your vendor place ASAP. Prices do go up the week before as well, so do not l- wait until last wait, minute. Wait, let's go backwards. When is Oktoberfest? Oh, hey! Oktoberfest <laughs> is October 23rd. Okay, so we have some time. Yes. And so you need to get your uh, vendor. How many vendors do you have the capacity? Uh, We have capacity for 50 vendors. Okay. So, yeah. So spaces are limited. Does it matter if there's uh, duplicates? Uh, We don't do duplicate. uh, Like, we won't have two color street. We won't have two um, Scentsy. We won't have two of things of that nature. Um, But if this lady makes wreaths and... And does this type of stuff, I'm asking them to do more of that other stuff if I already have So you have don't have two plate. honey vendors or any right, of that. Right, right. We try Bring to... what else you got. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, yeah. Well, well yes, um, it is bears, et cetera. I don't know about not having two honey vendors. Oh, yeah, that's true. Well, <laughs> that's Pulsen right. May, Winnie the Pooh, careful, right? Though. Let's go back to Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> Pulson may raid more than one vet. I can only afford for him to raid one vendor. So maybe you set up the vendors <laughs> across, farther away from each right, other so exactly. that people can stroll through and the same with candle vendors or yeah. whatever whatever it is. Yes. So you will have vendors. Will there be food? There will be food. Um, word on the street is that the Southern Star Brewery will have Taste the Asian out there, but the best food feature at Oktoberfest is our barbecue cook-off teams. Okay. Barbecue. So, uh, <laughs> are the uh, people participating in the barbecue team supposed to give samples to the people, or how does that work? Yes. So, our barbecue cook-off, it's a $200 entry fee with a 50% payout, plus we have a sponsor. Thank you to Stuart Keltner, um, Northwestern Mutual, for putting $1,000 in the pot uh, for the winners of the barbecue cook-off. So Friday night, we have our Friday Night Lights event, and that includes a um, exotic. They can cook anything exotic except for bear. Um, because people I don't eat bear? Yes. Some people like it. I have eaten it three times. Where do you even times. get that? Um, hunters. Yeah. yeah. Uh, people who hunt bear, then they eat the meat. It's good but that and seems stew. to be not the point, right? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> But and then we have our (laughs) Iron Chef. So our Iron Chef is we give you an an ingredient and you cook with that ingredient. And the leader going into our uh, Saturday morning wins our Friday Night Lights trophy. And so then um, Saturday morning we have our um, brisket, ribs, chicken and dessert. And then um, we do have our People's Choice Award. So as people come in, it's a $10 entry fee. They get a bowl and a ticket for each entry um, with a wristband. So you need to make sure you make enough so that people can taste. Right, exactly. And so people go around and they taste whatever you want them to taste. And if they like yours the best out of all of the cook-offs, they put the ticket in your jar. And then the person group with the most tickets wins that part of the event are you looking forward to that phil i am looking forward <laughs> i will pause uh, all over the pause. place just for that <laughs> pause pause yes bear pause bear okay. pause okay and so the exotic is more like like what kind um, of food people have done quail um they Ostrich. have done 
<laughs> Ostrich is another Ostrich, good one. Ostrich, yes. Yeah. Um, so things of that nature that you wouldn't normally have as a part of a barbecue cook-off. Um, because most of the time it's brisket and chicken and pork ribs and, you know, very specific. But exotic can be anything that they want to cook. That isn't the norm kind of thing. That isn't the norm. And when you yes. give them the secret ingredient, give me an example of what that would be. Um, so at our last event, we gave them Casa M Spices. Casa M Spice is one of our sponsors for the event, for specifically for that. the cook-off. Yes. And so we gave them their, their spices to cook with, and they had to cook something up, and they may have never even tasted Casa M Spices before. What's unique um, about it? Um, one, it's Texas made. And two is each spice is uniquely driven for a certain thing. So they have their pecking order, which is good on chicken. It's very themed. Their cattle drive, which is very beef. Um, they have their um, hooked, which is for fish. Um, and some of those, I see. Um, it all starts with the base of chain reaction, and chain reaction is their allspice. And then each one is taken and formulated. Goes off for in a different that. lane. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it's okay. very delicious. The, and then you can get it unchained, which means it's spicy. I can't do the unchained <laughs> chain oh, reaction. Dick would probably it's, like it's that. It's just my <laughs> cup of tea. Yes. <laughs> Phil I'm, likes I'm the spice here. Like, like well, sabanero spice. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, you and Dick. So you taste that, but then you also get to refresh it with the craft beers, yes. right? Yeah. So that's a good complement. Yes. Ca beer and uh, barbecue kind of barbecue. go together. Beer and barbecue. Right? And it's no, kind of a definitely. Texas beer thing. Texas. Yes. So I love that. that that's very cool. So looking forward to that. So tell me about the kids area. Kids area uh, this year. Thank you to JC um, Moonwalks. They are a new moonwalk vendor in the area. Small business. Uh, Cassidy Smart and her husband. Oh yeah. And they so are new. we will have okay. three large moonwalks there, and potentially their plush and stuff uh, truck, what is which that? is kind of like Build a Bear. Only wow. um, it's plush and stuff. And so you can come and you can make a bear and 15% of the proceeds come back to bears, etc. Now, they may already have an engagement. They're waiting to see. Um, but if they can bring both the moonwalks and the plush and stuff, they will. Wow. It's very exciting. That, that's, you know, makes the whole event so different. You know, you have the barbecue, you have vendors, you have kids area, and possibly, um, I mean, you have the inflatables and things for kids Right. To do. We try to make it a huge family-friendly event. And all that. Well, because it's about an animal sanctuary, yes. bottom line, right? Right. Absolutely. So, and let, let's talk a little bit about that. Tell me about what your hopes are for the animal sanctuary. And, Phil, can you give us some info on that? Well, uh, the animal, animal sanctuary, we're looking, you know, between 20 and 40 acres to try to... Uh, uh, acquire for a sanctuary, which would be not only a sanctuary for the animals, but an educational spot uh, to uh, for people to visit so that they can learn about the animals. Uh, we're looking here in the local area uh, of uh, Montgomery County and Walker County and uh, some of the other counties that are right in this general area. Not because it, because you know it's the edge of the uh, it's the edge of the the, the, the uh, forest the forest you yeah. know it's the edge of the you know it's the Sam a, Houston it's, forest and, yeah and it's it's pat compatible you know for for bears and for other exotic it's animals. a good habitat it's a great habitat it's a good habitat so, and so you haven't acquired anything at this point yet no correct? currently we're housed on a half an acre in Montgomery yeah. and in order to have large dangerous carnivores in Montgomery County specifically we have to have at least 20 acres because we can't build within a mile of a school and we can't build within a thousand feet of somebody's home so that's why that 20 so acres you're is raising required. money and if somebody had um, some land that they also wanted to partner up with you at I mean you could get their name on it or whatever right too right you know it, it can be um, you know the Dr. Phil Anderson Bears, etc. Campus, right, right, right. <laughs> no, I but, but think that's it, great. But the whole idea is really to provide a permanent community-based, self-sustainable refuge for displaced, exotic, and wild animals, and to educate everybody about that in our natural world. I mean, that's that is our mission. So, uh, but what kind of animals do you foresee being there? Um, so our the current sanctuary. animals 
Um, we have exotic birds and reptiles, so they'll definitely move to that location. But our focus is bears. There is no true bear sanctuary in the United States. There are big cat sanctuaries. And let me back up a little bit and say a true sanctuary is do not buy, sell, breed, trade, or use animals for entertainment. So um, we are not the cub pay to play or the roadside attractions that you Circus may see. Sex, whatever. Yeah, we will not be doing that. We're actually rescuing from those places. Um, so being are they bear treated focused, badly? They can be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely can be, and I have seen some of those in my t- over twenty years in the industry. Um, so we. We'll probably have some big cats, some tigers and lions, cougars, things of that nature, because they are very prevalent in the exotic pet trade as well. And people ask, you know, well, where do they come from? Well, there are breeders across the United States of these animals, um, just like there are for dogs and cats. And so those animals then grow up and people find out if they've bought them for a pet that it they don't make a, good pets. It isn't a little kitty anymore. No. It's out. It doesn't fit in your backyard. It doesn't. It doesn't. And it may climb the fence. (laughs) Right, right. Um, And we have become Southeast Texas experts in exotic animal rescue. So when that tiger got loose on Mother's Day, I had actually just gotten off of a flight, and I'm taking a phone call for a serval that's chained out in a backyard up in Northeast Texas, and one of the animal control people are calling me that there's a tiger loose in Houston. And so we were able to get the Big Cat Sanctuary Alliance involved and help it find placement at one of the true sanctuaries right here in Texas, in Northeast Texas. So you do a lot of good. And I mean, you're out there rescuing birds, parakeets, tigers, Uh, helping with dogs, even helping whatever. I mean, there is no end and your reach is pretty far. I know you have assisted me with some things out of state. And so it's all about the relationships. But the bottom line is you want to have a safe uh, place to not only for the animals to live their lives out, but so you can it can be a learning um, opportunity as well. Sharing these animals stories and where they come from and telling about what they were before they received permanent placement at our refuge and the three six or 180 I guess um that they've become you know they go from being a depressed maybe sick maybe lots of parasites to actually exhibiting natural behaviors um which is what they they were intended to be right exactly right um so for instance um, we rescued 51 parakeets out of a park in Houston that someone had sent. That was crazy. Yes, it was crazy. <laughs> and these birds were just fledglings, which means they just learned how to fly. They still had brown on their beak and their stripes. And anybody who's had parakeets, um, their stripes were totally to their nose, which means they're like they had just left their parents. They're right? babies. And so they didn't know the peregrine falcons were a natural predator and you know, that's what was happening is we were trying to rescue some of the over 100 and we ended up getting all of them that survived and we built a free flight aviary for them on our campus in order for them to exhibit the behaviors that they would naturally have. Now, unfortunately, some of the parakeets that we rescued passed away from kidney failure. Now, can you imagine being six, a six month old bird and having kidney failure that early on in your life? Um, so it's just horrible the treatment that they received at such a young age. And the other side of it, too, is we rescued some birds and their wings had been clipped. And they never built up the muscles to be able to fly. So they don't have those freedoms anymore. And they have to actually stay inside. They're in a big flight cage inside, but they can't live in the aviary because they wouldn't be able to get to the food and water Um, if they were out there because they've never learned how to fly. And we see that with bears, too. Bears that are kept on concrete, they They never build up. They can't fly. Yeah, that's right. Um, They never build (laughs) up the muscles in their rear end to be able to climb trees. It's so sad. So what I'm hearing you say is you take care of creatures great and small. That's the truth. You know, I mean, seriously, you have from the little birds to the expansive We have two dwarf hamsters right now. (laughs) You have rescued bears as well, right? Yeah. 
Yep. We rescued five bears out of northeast Texas and took them to a facility in Arizona because right now we can't provide placement for those large dangerous carnivores on our half an acre. Um, so we're still rescuing and moving animals even if we can't place them. So and you're very passionate about this because I know you are and yeah. you help anybody with anything. I mean, you have um, we were just been in, involved in animal care for a long time. Yes, since I was 16 years old, so over 25 years. You've done some uh, vet tech stuff. Yep. And uh, you've had some education on it. You're Purdue invi- University. You're involved in <laughs> a um, lot of um, work across the country with different people. Yeah, we just got back from a transport to Oregon as a part of the Big Cat Sanctuary Alliance. So we took a Savannah cat up there that came from Florida. So a peer uh, sanctuary in that organization drove it as far as Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Um, Two volunteers for bears, et cetera, picked it up in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, picked me up in Dallas, and we took it out to the Wildcat Sanctuary in Oregon. Wow. So that was great to have. It was quite quite the cross-country experience. Where is it in Oregon? Uh, Northwest Oregon in um, Scotts Mills, Oregon. Wildcat Ridge Sanctuary. Huh. Well, I'll be making some trips in the future to Oregon, so we'll see. Maybe <laughs> I can, maybe you can come along. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I know that you do a lot of things. So when, pe- when you talk about this animal sanctuary, you're talking mm-hmm. from your heart. Yes. And you seriously do take care of all kinds of issues, animals. You take calls. And so uh, this sanctuary would be a permanent place that animals can come from different parts of the country and stay there and be part of what we have going on in Montgomery County. Because, I mean, it's a great place to live, you know. Right. Exactly. So it will have people that come in from all over to see the animals being treated fairly. Yeah. I mean, so when you go to a circus, are most of those animals tranquilized and not treated nicely? Um, Most of their training is not nice no i don't i can't say about tranquilization but yes um they're actually the usda is looking for two of the tiger acts currently um they have had their um usda license revoked and they have left the place that they were most recently housing their cats at in those transport cages that are four feet by eight feet Um, That's what those uh, tigers were living in, and they've up and disappeared. So, yeah, the circus acts, they don't treat, most circus acts don't treat. So they're not what they appear to be. Correct. It's all very superficial. Yeah. And that's the con behind the conservation that these people are spewing, basically. Hmm. Interesting. So, as a board member, why why are you. Uh, involved with bears etc phil well um it was a funny funny thing one day i was, had a little contest for nonprofits, and uh, uh one day was it, uh, katie <laughs> it was about a couple of years ago and katie wrote and another uh, nonprofit wrote in and said i would love to have a office etc and uh become involved uh, and have a place to do uh bears etc and being from the farm and, and having lots of, we'll call it domestic animal experience, not the wild kind of experience, but caring for animals, uh, I that hit a spot in my heart. And so um, Katie's with us over at Office Evolution. And, and we, it's a good uh, partnership. And, and we, uh, uh, she was kind enough to offer me a, uh, to be on the board because of my interest in, in animals and, and uh, and their uh, treatment. Uh, now I, you know, and it's been a wild ride, hasn't it? Uh, it has. It has. It's, so uh, it's, it's evolved. Wind. It has evolved, etc. So we have, uh, you know, lots of different different activities that we do, and then we're, we're with this trying to do a capital campaign for for the uh, uh, more than twenty acres of land that we need for the sanctuary. You know, we're we're constantly looking to do the uh, things to help enhance that. Uh, and uh, make progress, and so you know, it was a tough year in, in, with uh, 2020 and COVID. Uh, so, but uh, we're on the roll right now with, uh, with October Air Fest and a few of other the, uh, fun. Yeah. festivals that we'll be having. Um, we um, we have uh, what's it? Uh, um, bear uh, birthday. Bear birthday, crawl. Bear crawl. We had we the, had bear, the bear, crawl. bear crawl. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and that was a good one. You know, where you got to. Uh, go check out the local wineries and meaderies and 
and uh, uh, breweries here in uh, in Conroe. That was a great one. And uh, then there's these birthday bashes that right, we have that uh, where people uh, we get together and and have a little party, uh, etc. That you can have. Uh, and then um, other uh, just uh, other pop ups at marketplaces and things like that, which involves uh, all the volunteers that we have. And of course, you know, with any organization like this, we can always use more volunteers. Exactly. So, will you need so. volunteers for your Oktoberfest? Yes, we'll be posting the Sign Up Genius shortly on our website and on our Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. So, give us a follow and a like, and you can sign up. And as a part of your sign up, you will get to taste great barbecue. Sounds fun. So, I mean, it really sounds like a great cause. And I know that you're passionate about this. We spoke once upon a time in the very beginning. How long ago was that? Four years. Has it been four years? Yeah. Before it was a uh, nonprofit, but you had the dream. And it's really important to chase your dreams. Yes. You know, we all have dreams. And sometimes it just takes time to get there. And you have roadblocks along the way and different challenges. But if you stay on course and it's something that will be sustainable, you will be watched over and you will be able to clear the tracks and reach your goal. But you got to stay on, stay on track, right? Stay on and um, move forward. And I know that you are doing a lot of strides to do this and raise some money it's it's all it's all a positive thing so your website is bears etc org and you can find out all the information about vendors uh, sponsorships because you're still taking sponsors right mm-hmm. yep and you have different levels for that and do they need to pay in advance to get the uh, ten dollar it's ten dollars right the ten dollar ticket they can buy in? tickets on eventbrite or they can pay the day of okay so you can go to the website, but you can also look on Facebook. You Facebook, can Instagram, and Twitter? All, all of it. All, all of it. All of it. So, interesting. What do you think about Twitter? I never seem to get much reaction on Twitter. I don't either. But um, you do it. <laughs> but we do, and we tag people. We have more um, Giving Tuesday um, mm-hmm. following November. On- November 30th is Giving Tuesday. So yeah, right after Thanksgiving. Yep, yep. the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Um, we Without have turkeys this year. <laughs> <laughs> the freeze in Texas really put a damper on a lot of stuff, including the pumpkin patches and the turkeys. Okay, so being that uh, um, you care about animals, you still eat meat and all that yes. stuff, right? Yes. So that you're not against that. No. Okay, so some people would question that. Right. And I was just having, that's funny you say this because I was just having that conversation earlier today is that a lot of people, when they learn that, you know, I'm building a bear sanctuary and they're like, oh, she must be vegan. She doesn't eat meat. What's she doing? And you're having a barbecue. And we're having a barbecue. (laughs) Uh, uh, I grew up hunting and fishing. Uh, I'm fifth generation farmer. And I do believe that some of our hunters and fishermen are our biggest conservationists. Um, So much money goes back from them buying their licenses into the conservation of the species, especially state, you know, the state of Texas and where that money goes back to, to help sustain viable populations of those species. Because the hunters and fishermen, if those go away, they're not going to have anything to hunt and fish for. So they want them to be here um, and uh, be a part of the ecosystems in Texas. So, no, we are not vegan and we are not anti-hunting. We are anti-poaching and we are anti-canned hunting, um, but we are not anti-hunting. See, I just wanted so. to get that message out. Yes. Yeah. So people know. It's absolutely. I mean, it's absolutely correct. I mean, it's it's one of those things where uh, Katie mentioned it's, it's, it's creating that ecosystem uh, and we're part of that ecosystem. Right. I mean, as human beings, I mean that, and we have that responsibility to uh, uh, to uh, make sure that that sustainable uh, future is still there for mm-hmm. for animals and for species that are that are uh, endangered and uh, other things. So yeah, we're not like I said, not anti hunting, not anti uh, any uh, anything like that. But we're. Uh, uh, we are, how would you say it, for sustainability. So, yeah, because okay. there's no planet B. True. 
So the third annual Oktoberfest and uh, sponsors are Casa M. Spice, State Farm, Stewart Keltner, K- Keltner Northwestern Mutual, Barbecue Cook-Off, $1,000 Cash Pot, uh, Vendors, Come Play, $200 per team to be a part of the Barbecue Cook-Off. All of that information is on bearsetc.org. And this is happening on... October 23rd. Saturday, October 23rd from 10 to 5. Southern Star Brewery. If you haven't been there, they've been there... I don't remember now how long. Three years, four years. I don't Something know. Time like seems to fly oh, lately. Well, I think but it's more than that. Yeah, it so. might be. Who knows? Let's yeah. just say five years. So <laughs> <laughs> let's just throw that out there. Uh, they're past where Madeira Estates is at 3083. And I believe. They're just they're, north of Madeira Estates on yes, 75. Uh, on 75. Yep. So go check it out. And they're going to um, have their good. fall flavors out. And what are the fall flavors? Let's talk uh, about that. They have their Cygord, which is their pumpkin. Pumpkin, um, how he described it is a dark copper ale with a rich, creamy mouthfeel due to a generous addition of oatmeal, caramel malt flavors with a touch of pumpkin pie spice on the finish. Oh my gosh, doesn't that sound delicious? Yes, I want to try it. <laughs> and their other is their, you know, Oktoberfest. Why would you have a craft beer and not have Oktoberfest? Um, but it's a German style. Uh, amber hued with full malt aroma and thick, creamy, frothy, f- foamy froth. Uh, a taste that offers decidedly nutty light roast with an emphasis on malt sweetness that's smooth and well balanced. Okay. Now so that's a mouthful. It, yes. There's a lot in there. I like the pumpkin one. I really want to try the pumpkin one. Yeah. Um, they also, uh, for those, so I'm not a huge beer drinker if any really um i'm more of a wine and whiskey person but they have a hibiscus brew out there i don't know if they'll keep that year round or if it's only a southern thing but it is like a spring kind of thing yeah so i had it as recently as a month ago when i was out there so maybe you might be open to trying something new maybe and I'm I thinking, definitely want to picturing try, pe- try that bringing board. a Bavarian mug right? for Oktoberfest. Well, I'm bringing mine, and it stands about <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, it's about a three liter mug from Bavaria. So that will Bavaria do you all day in the Black Forest. Yeah, that'll and, do you all day. Do you have a little hat, you know, a little a fedora, little style, uh, yeah. and all that kind of thing? You have your leader hosen. I don't have my leader hose, and I I put those up, you know. So. You know, <laughs> We but, do need uh, to get Paulson some Lederhosen, though. Oh, we should. We should get Paulson some Lederhosen. So Paulson will be there. Paulson will be the there, most definitely. Doing yep. pictures. Yes. And doing pictures with okay. the kids. And, 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 and you and take donations. Them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Any amount. Any amount. <laughs> 20 acres of land would be a great amount. Bears, et cetera, <laughs> dot org. Bears, et cetera. Et cetera means all the other animals. Everything all else. All the other exotics yeah. that, are, that are out there. Yeah. Tortoises. Yeah, they, all of it. Yep tortoises birds they don't have to be tigers. mean animals they can be gentle animals <laughs> right yes yeah and to be able to rescue them from the, from from uh, uh bad circumstances is really bad really, people uh, well bad, bad lives bad people bad uh not knowledgeable people and they think they're doing the right thing but they they aren't you know that's one of the issues too and so but uh be able to uh, bring them into a sanctuary environment. I mean, that's that's the right thing to do. So, yeah, awesome. Okay, well, this show is sponsored by Roger Stein Chiropractic and Team Sinisi, and we appreciate your time. BearsEtc.org. Thank you, Margie. Thank you, Margie. Okay.